drawing our clamp block in Autodesk Inventor. The things we're going to be working on today is blueprint reading, 3D parametric modeling, subtractive modeling, and our whole feature for the counter bar. You can see from our front view in our drawing, we're going to start off with a rectangle that is 4 inches wide, horizontal, by 1.25 inches tall in the vertical. So a rectangle that is 4 by 1.25. To begin, we're going to start with a fresh inventor screen open. In the ribbon bar at the top, we're going to click New, Standard IPT, and click Create. Going up to our ribbon bar in the top left corner, we're going to click on the drawing with the green plus mark, 2D sketch, and as always, we're going to select our XY plane. And before we start drawing, we're going to click front in our world view queue. So for that rectangle, we're going to click our rectangle tool out of the ribbon bar at the top. Start at our origin. When you get your green dot, click and stretch a rectangle to the upper right hand quadrant. Here we're going to type in 4 for our horizontal dimension, press the tab key, 1.25 for our vertical dimension, press enter on the keyboard. Next we're going to go up to the top right hand corner of our ribbon bar and we're going to select finish sketch green check mark right here. And I'm going to go home by my world view cube. Next I'm going to take an extrude. I'm going to click Extrude right here. Now in our Extrude menu, I want this to be in the flip direction to make this arrow point away from us. And now I want to enter in a depth for how far back we're going to extrude. If we take a look at our drawing, this is our front view. And on our side view, it shows us that I'm going to be extruded 6 inches. So let's go back to our part. I'm going to highlight this distance here and I'm going to type 6 inches in for the distance. I also want that flip direction as well. Then click OK and go home in your world view cube. Next we're going to take and we are going to cut out these corners in the front view of our clamp block. I'm going to take a 2D sketch. I'm going to place it on my front view. 2D sketch is a picture of the drawing with the green plus mark. When my front view highlights as red, I'm going to click to place that sketch. Go and zoom in a little bit. I'm going to use my rectangle tool for this. Before I take and draw this rectangle, I want to take a look here. This rectangle is 0.75 for the width of it and 0.63 for the height of it. And that's for both sides. So let's start in the upper left hand corner. When I get my green dot that shows that it's locked onto that corner, I'm going to click and stretch out a rectangle. The horizontal dimension was 0.75, so I'll enter that in here. Press the tab key on the keyboard. My vertical dimension was 0.63. Once you have those two numbers entered in, press enter on the keyboard. Now I'm going to go on to my next rectangle in the upper right hand corner here. If you lost your rectangle tool, it's not a big deal. Just come up here to the top, click on your rectangle tool again, and we want to start in that upper right-hand corner. Once I get my green dot, I'm going to click, and I'm going to stretch this one out. Since this is the same dimension, I'm going to type in 0.75 for the horizontal, press the tab key, 0.63 for the vertical. Once you have those entered in, press Enter on the keyboard. Once we have those two corners drawn, then we're going to come up to the top ribbon bar and we're going to click the green check mark, finish sketch, right here. Now we're going to take an extrude and cut them. So we're going to select our extrude button again. Nothing happened, so I need to select those two surfaces. So I'm going to pick this square and this rectangle here. So once you have these two rectangles selected, you can see that it's coming out towards us. So I want to put this in the flip direction so it goes to cut. I want to enter in a distance of 6 inches to cut all the way through, and then select OK. Great job so far. Now we're going to take 
and we are going to put this counter bore for the hole at the top. For this counter bore, we're going to start with a point that is located 1.25 inches in from the side and 3 inches up from the bottom. And we'll come back and take a look at what all this stuff means here. So back to our part. We're going to take a 2D sketch, this drawing with the green plus mark. We're going to place it on the top view of our part. Click top in your world view cube to zoom off. I'm going to select my point tool for the ribbon bar at the top and I'm going to click one point at the top of my block. Now I need to dimension that. If we go back to our sheet, you can view this as a PDF or you can follow along here. It is 1.25 inches in from this side and it's three inches up from the front. Let's go back to our part. So now I'm going to dimension from this side of my clamp block not the far outermost side, the side that we just got done cutting. We're going to click when it turns red, and then when our mouse or our cursor gets to the point, we're going to click once again and pull this dimension down. This dimension here was 1.25. You can press enter on the keyboard or click the green checkbox. We also need another dimension from the bottom of our block to where our point is located. Click when they turn red. Bring this dimension out to the side. This dimension is 3.0. And enter on the keyboard or green check mark. Great job so far. Now we're going to take and finish sketch, green check mark. And I'm going to go to my hole tool that's up here in the top. Now before I select my hole tool, let's take a look at our drawing. This has a double hole sort of drilled in front of it. It's called a counter bore. The counter bore is the first thing that we're going to enter in. It has a dimension for a diameter of 0.113 and a depth of 0.25. The drill diameter is 0.75 by 1.25. So let's take a look at doing that. Our whole tool is right up here in our ribbon bar. We're going to click to select that. It should automatically select that point, but if it does not, you may have to come in here and click that point and then it should automatically select. Mm -hmm. A couple of things in here we want to change. Hole, we want this to be a simple hole, so this box should be selected. And since we're doing a counter bore where it says seat, we want to select our counter bore button. And that should give us these dimensions here. I also have a termination distance select and a direction towards us. For our counter bore dimension, we're going to type in 1.13. I lost it there. For my counter bore dimension, I'm going to type in 1.13. For the depth of that counter bore, I'm going to type in 0.25. My depth of the hole comes next at 1.25. And my diameter of that hole is 0.75. So once I have those dimensions entered in, I have simple hole, I have a seat with a counter bore, I have a distance, default, and then my dimensions that I just got done typing in here, I'm going to click OK. Great job, it looks like we're done. The only thing that we're going to do next is change our material type. We're going to go up to the top where it says default, click the selected in the pull down menu, we're going to scroll up to the B's, and I want to select beige. Once you have it as beige, we're going to go File. We're going to go Save As. Orange file in the upper left-hand corner, Save As. And I'm going to select my H drive. This should come up as first initial, last name, 000. If it does not, you need to click on the pull-down menu here. Scroll down to the bottom and select your H drive. First initial, last name, 000. And in here for our part name, we're going to call this Clamp block. Once you have this titled clamp block, H drive is selected, click save. Great job. The next video is going to be how to put it on a standard IDW and how to turn it into Google Classroom.